Hello, this is the video for May 26th, 2024, Holy Trinity Sunday. Also, we celebrate Memorial Day tomorrow. Uh, so we will thank the Lord for the gift of those who show the greatest love in giving their life for others. Um, we are going to open with our Holy Trinity hymn, Holy, 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 hymn 507. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which wit and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. We're going to use Divine Service Setting 5, found on page 213. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to use Psalm 29 as our psalm for today. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. 
He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing the Kyrie on page 944. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Christe be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go in for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with both confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and is, too with us, is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, 
And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for today comes from John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you believe, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended up, who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the Spirit in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're going to sing our hymn of the day, hymn 802, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains I soaring above, Thy clouds, which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not claim changes thee. Great Father of glory, your Father of light, thine angels adore thee, 
availing their sight. A lot we would render, oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light that hides thee. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Scripture, God has revealed himself to us. He came to us in the flesh as a man. He tells us of how he came in the past as a fire or as a wind or as a light. He has come into our world to let us know who he is. And God has revealed that he is one God, but three persons. This is very important. It is important to know that God, who is one and has been one from eternity, has also had a relationship from eternity. That there has been a Father who has loved a Son, a Son who has loved the Holy Spirit, a Holy Spirit who has loved the Father. And that they have all loved one another. When God created man in his own image, he created him to be like God in desire, to be like God in what he has as important, what he seeks after. God created man because God is three persons, someone who is not alone, but who wants and desires to have other friendships, other relationships, other people to love. Now God is sufficient in himself. He didn't need man to be satisfied. But love, as God demonstrates in the Trinity, is a growing thing. If you have two people to love, and your love is good and, and true, then you would like to have three people to love. If you have three people to love, then you'd like to have four people to love. That is the nature of God, that he likes this growth. He wants more people to love. He wants a larger family. He placed that into the nature of man. When he created Adam and Eve, male and female, when he said it's not good for a man to be alone, it's because man was reflecting the Trinity. Because man in his love of the world around him and the love of the animals and of nature reflected God, God the creator. God who, when we look in our catechism, we often talk about the Father as the creator. Now all of God is the creator, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit all had a part. But we look at God as the creator. And he wanted a beautiful world. He wanted a, pan, a, a place where he could put down his order and his structure and a design that he could look at and see how wonderfully made it was, how marvelous it is, how it's aesthetically pleasing. He put these desires into man when he created us in his image. But he didn't just want a beautiful world. He wanted to be able to share that beautiful world with others. And certainly God shares Father with the Son, the Son with the Holy Spirit, etc. But he created man, that expansion of love, that growth of family. And now man looked at the beautiful world, the wonderful animals, the way his body worked. And he wanted to share that. And he shared it with God, and that was wonderful. But he wanted someone like himself to share it with, because man is created in the image of God. So God created Eve, woman. The two became one flesh, similar to the Trinity is one. And the two became creative like God, tending the garden, looking at the beauty around them, naming the animals and showing love to them. And later, even in the corruption of their flesh, when they violated God's command and ate of the fruit, trying to be more like God than they had been created to be, later, man and woman had a child. That creative function of God played out in the life of people. Cain, then other children, Abel, Seth, and other children. 
God is a creator. And he's put that image in man so that we want to create. And we learn from God in the Trinity what it means to be a designer, a creator, an artist, to be those good things, to share them with others, to have them, our creative impulses, have a positive effect upon the world and making it a better place for those whom we love. But we also talk about the Trinity, particularly the personhood of Jesus, the Son, as a Redeemer. God not only put in man a creative impulse, a life-giving impulse, but he also made man a protector. Man, one who doesn't give up on those whom he loves. And after we fell into sin, well, fell is probably not the word, sought out sin. After we committed that sin and we turned our backs upon God's great design and started bringing ugliness and destruction and death into the world and fighting against that creative impulse and being corrupted to a point where we had destructive and nihilistic impulses. After that, the Trinity chose not to abandon its children, chose not to abandon us. But the Father said to the Son, I have a plan for saving mankind, for saving our great creation, this, these people that we love. That is, that someone has to pay the price who's perfect and who's infinite. So we have redemption. We have another reflection of the love of the Trinity, the creative love which caused God to make a world of beauty and to make people a family, to expand his number and to expand out what was in existence. But now the redemptive love, which despite the destructive nature of what is presently in existence, changes that, pays the price, is willing to sacrifice so that we might live. Jesus says, no greater love has a man than this, that he give his life for one another. That's precisely what Jesus did. Redemption. Paid our price, made us new. And we reflect that love. Memorial Day, we see that. We see that obviously when we hear about soldiers who are willing to die for the good of our nation, for the good of individuals, for the good of other soldiers. And we honor them and we respect that love because we realize this is good. It is a thing of the Trinity, a thing of the Father. That even when disaster, even when the, deserve, the deserving nature of man is to be destroyed, the God of love wants to save the nature of man and make it again anew. God of, man does, God of love doesn't want to lose anyone. The Trinity from eternity wants man to be with him to eternity. So we see the redemptive truth in Jesus' death and resurrection, and we reflect that redemptive truth in our acts of love to save those around us and to seek to bring them out of darkness and into light, to seek to have them be back in the good creative plan of God. Which leads us to the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. The noema, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit whom we associate with present living, whom we associate with the reality of God's plan being played out in the here and now. God not only sought and designed a beautiful world, a place where people could live, he not only then redeemed that world, was willing to sacrifice and did sacrifice himself so that we might live. But now he teaches us how to live. He has instruction and learning. He sets up a church where the gifts he has can be given to us. He sets up a culture where we can gather together and hear his word and receive his forgiveness and then go out 
and give his physical blessings, his creative and his redemptive blessings to those with whom we exist. The Holy Spirit is associated with what it means to be a loving family, to be a loving unit. And that's done by making us holy, by making us set apart for God and set apart for one another. By letting us see that we have purposes that are unique to us. Just as the, Jesus had the unique purpose of dying on the cross, just as the Holy Spirit came to us as the Comforter sent by the Father, just as the Father uniquely created the plan and, and had it executed by the other two members, the other two persons of the Trinity. One God, yet three persons, demonstrating in our lives, in our church, that different members of the church have different gifts and different ways of executing the sanctified gifts of God. Each of us set in the church with different roles, Sunday school teachers, musicians, students, those who set up the altarware, who put up the cloth, who clean the yard, those who come and glorify God in song and prayer, who raise their children, who look out for their elderly, those who help out their neighbors, those who create art, those who have children and give life, those who heal the sick and provide the food, different vocations, different lives set aside for God. And by set aside, we don't mean kept out of the world, but kept in the world. After all, he is the creator who made this world, the redeemer who brought it back from death into life. The life giver who put us here to do these things in the world for each other, with each other. Like the Trinity existing together loving one another, willing to sacrifice for the good of all. We learn of the Holy Trinity, that we have a God sufficient from eternity, a God who loved from eternity. We look upon whom he is, and then we reflect it in our life, for we were created in his image, and that's our purpose, to be his children, to love God, to love one another, to do those things which are naturally part of the design and the nature of man, because they're naturally part of the design, the much greater design and nature of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us speak of the truths of the Trinity by reciting the Athanasian Creed found on page 319. Whoever desire, desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic, that is, the universal faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the universal faith is this, that we worship one God in unity and Trinity in unity. I'm sorry, one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. 
just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man be composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One, altogether not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. That is coming all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. That is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. We're going to continue with the prayer of the church. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us so that we know the one on whom we have been designed. And as we look at our set-aside self and the tasks that we have been given, we see that they are a reflection of your more full and divine love. And that as we act out things in this world, in this place that you have created with the people you have created, we are acting out your will and your design. And we are doing what is good and right and creative and holy and life-giving. Lord, let us be your church and follow in that plan. Let our country be a place where that plan can be executed. Our soldiers, keep them safe, Lord. But Lord, we thank you for those who came before and gave sacrifice. That they showed the love you have in a small measure by giving their life for us. Lord, we pray for our church and community, for our society, that we all might reflect your much greater love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn of thanks, hymn 506, Glory Be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, Glory be to God the Spirit, great Jehovah, three in one. Glory, glory, while eternal ages run. Glory be to him who loved us, washed us from each spot and stain. Glory be to him who bought us, made us kings with him to reign. 
Glory, glory to the Lamb who once was slain. Glory be, glory to the King of angels. Glory to the church's King. Glory to the King of nations. Heaven and earth your praises bring. Glory, glory to the King of glory, sing. Glory, blessing, praise eternal, thus the choir of angels sings. Honor, riches, power, dominion, thus its praise creation brings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your church and finally attain the light of everlasting life. Therefore, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you and give you praise. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to close with hymn 525, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns All music but its own Awake my soul and sing Of him who died for thee And hail him as thy matchless king Through all eternity Crown him the virgin son the God incarnate born, whose arm those crimson trophies won, which now his brow adorn. Fruit of the mystic rose, yet of that rose the stem, the root whence mercy ever flows, the babe of Bethlehem. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. No angels in the sky, can fully bear that sight, but downward bend their wondering eyes at mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife, for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. 
Crown him the Lord of heaven, enthroned in worlds above. Crown him the King, to whom is given the wondrous name of love. Crown him with many crowns, as thrones before him fall. Crown him, ye kings, with many crowns, for he is king of all. Go in the peace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.